Hello, Zebra developer audience. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we have Darren Campbell, who's going to be presenting today. And uh, we appreciate everybody's attendance. Hope you have that cup of coffee and you're ready to go. A uh, couple of housekeeping rules for this morning, this afternoon, wherever you may be. Um, if you have questions, please put those in the question box. And I can address those with Darren at the conclusion of this webinar, and we can respond to those. As always, you can always send us questions at developer at zebra.com. That's our email box. And we also have our developer portal, and we encourage you to join us. It's free to join. You go to developer.zebra.com. We can um, make sure that you get all the information that you need and uh, information on upcoming webinars and our DevBuzz newsletter, which has a lot of content that you'll probably like. Um, always, we are no marketing, no fluff. It's just direct technical information and news to you. Um, and with that, I am going to turn over today's event to Darren. Thanks, Stacey. You can hear me, can't you? Hopefully. We can all hear you. Yes, we're all good. Brilliant. And we can see you, Brilliant. which is really nice. <laughs> well, I don't, uh, opinions vary on that. I'm wearing my new <laughs> Zebra Devs uh, outfit here. Uh, so, yeah, I'm getting really in, in the spirit of everything. Uh, I'm going to be talking about enterprise keyboard and enterprise keyboard designer in this dev talk, if I move a little bit further away. Uh, I'm going to try and make this demo heavy because it was just easier than trying to record everything. So, hopefully, everything goes well and uh, we, we can you know show show the products to the best of their abilities capabilities uh, I'll, I'll try and start at the beginning I know we've had enterprise keyboard out there for a while but uh, some people might not be familiar with it so I will just give a very quick overview of enterprise keyboard and then I'll go into some of the features which you may not be aware of even if you were aware of the product's existence uh, we have uh, configuration settings for it we have an API available for EKB and then I'll be demoing that API fingers crossed all will go well uh, and then I will also cover our enterprise keyboard designer tool which is a product that we are continually working on uh, I'd say it was a, a point now where you're able to take it and create some real uh, keyboard layouts custom keyboard layouts for your deployments and uh, use them in your applications and I'll be demoing that functionality all uh, all things go well so it's it's not between you and me, it's not the most intuitive of uh, interfaces to get to grips with, so it really does help having that like I don't know, 20 minute demo, I think. So uh, yeah, without much further ado, uh, you can download Enterprise Keyboard. This is actually an old, uh, an old screenshot because they've redone the software download portal, but it's the same URL. It's, uh, it's software downloads and um, Enterprise Keyboard, Enterprise Keyboard Designer. They are on there separately. If I just go to um, uh, I think I actually pulled it up here. Yeah, so this this is what it looks like nowadays. Uh, if you go to like mobile computer software support, it's under device customization, security management, enterprise keyboard, enterprise keyboard designer. They're both there, and you can download them. They're not uh, necessarily uh, need. You, so what I'm trying to say is, we used to have EKB. Uh, pre-installed on our NuGet devices. It's no longer pre-installed, uh, so you can always upgrade to the latest version by you know, downloading this an APK. You install it just like any other keyboard, and then you have to provision EKB. You can do that using Stage Now with your EMM just to set the default IME, the default keyboard, essentially. Um, and then I think this, uh, actually, let me just show these slides and I'll go into a demo of what this looks like on the device. So having installed Enterprise Keyboard, we designed this to be uh, enterprise focused. So things like uh, outdoors, uh, high contrast environment. So it's very easy for people to see. Uh, if you are wearing gloves, for example, we, we do have glove support with our touch screens on many of our devices but uh, sometimes the keyboards are a little bit small. So we made the keys a little bit bigger. We've done ergonomic analysis. Um, that's, that might not be the correct term, but we've done some analysis to make sure that you're able to, to click the right uh, buttons if you're wearing gloves. And we've also made it very configurable. And this is where I will go into a, a very quick demo of exactly what you can do with EKB Enterprise Keyboard. So I have on this device installed the very latest version of Enterprise Keyboard, which is version 
nine nine one. I'm looking at my other window over there with with it in. Um, but you uh, you use it just like any standard keyboard. So you like on on Android, you can change switch between keyboards that you have installed. Like I've got this is EKB. These three options up here. That's only because I've enabled French and Spanish. I was I, I just trying to understand how how that worked. To be honest, uh, Gboard is the standard keyboard that you will get on all GMS devices. That's the keyboard which has been uh, distributed by Google and Google Voice Typing. So here I have set the default input method as uh, enterprise keyboard and I'm able to use it. It has a, a feature, I can't remember what we call it. it. Essentially you can swipe between the different layouts. Um, because I'm doing this on screen share, that didn't, didn't go very well. But if I use my finger on a real device, it's a lot more intuitive uh, and easy to use. So I can quickly swipe between the layouts and the astute amongst you will have noticed at the very end of those swiping, we have a, a quick scanning button. So what probably I can probably scan my face and then oh, you go. Look, so it is it I I'm telling the truth, it is actually scanning something as I do that. Um you can configure this keyboard to uh remove some of these layouts, for example. Let me just check that that's not someone telling me. Oh no, that's uh okay. I was just checking that I wasn't um like inaudible or something like that. Uh, I can go into settings and change the keyboard settings in the same way as I do for any other keyboard. So under languages and input and virtual keyboard, enterprise keyboard is at the top here. And if I actually click on it, the remote screen shows being a little bit funny. Uh, so I can choose languages. Uh, it's actually built on top of the standard AOSP keyboard. So when I mean, we, we haven't had them for a while, but there is a keyboard that's part of the Android open source project. We've taken that and we've added on to that. So I know keyboards are very complicated to develop from scratch, but that's why we've been able to concentrate on what makes this uh, enterprise differentiated keyboard. Uh, but some of the preferences, uh, for example, you can like, I think you can flick up to, um, to, to uh, go flick to, to accept the alternative. There's the show scan tab. So for example, if I was to disable that, then you could go back. And then if I'm using the keyboard in an app, when it comes up, I'm no longer able to show the scan tab. So many preferences. I've actually put all of those settings in screenshots here because I thought it would be uh, boring for me to go through them on this call. The One of the oft used features is this ability to remap specific buttons. Uh, they're called like P1, P2, P3, and P4. So on the actual keyboard here, if you see uh, on the on the numeric keypad, you've got these four keys down the left-hand side. By default, they're mapped to plus, colon, hash, and dollar symbol. You can choose other keys there. If you've got a key that's frequently used with your number pad, then you know, that's that's where you could uh, could do that modification. Uh, that's not the designer tool, that's like some very basic modification. We'll get into what happens if you want to create fully customized layouts for your keyboard. Um, so at a very high level then, that's what enterprise keyboard can do. Uh, being Zebra, we, also, we obviously we're talking about mon managing hundreds, thousands of devices in, a, in an individual deployment. So all of those uh, settings that you saw in the previous slide are configurable through our MX layer uh, and also through OEM config as well. Uh, this is how you would manage your keyboard through your EMM, Enterprise Mobility Manager, or you can also use Stage Now to manage all of these settings in the keyboard. Excuse me. So uh, under and under Stage Now, it's the uh, the keyboard manager. I think I have. I did bring the documentation up before I uh, started this call. Here we are. So. Everything under this enterprise keyboard manager here is modifiable either through EMM or through uh, or, or through stage now. Things like auto correction, blocking offensive words, double space uh, inputs period, or you know, what's it called, full stop in uh, in the UK. And uh, yeah, so um, everything is fully manageable in a, a mass deployment environment. Uh, so to be honest, that's where we kind of were about a year and a half ago, maybe. I mean, we've we've added a few properties over time, but one of the more interesting, more recent features which have been added is an API for the enterprise keyboard. Uh, this is if you want to control your keyboard on the fly, uh, a very common 
requirement or requests from our our users is to only show the keyboard in certain fields to have that that control over the keyboard where some uh, you have a, a scan you're scanning into an input field for example so you don't want to have the keyboard show up but then you're entering a quantity into the following field so you do want to have the keyboard show up those use cases have been quite difficult to manage typically with with native applications the the actual inbuilt api to android is a little bit um, confusing when it comes to keyboards so we have a intent based keyboard api and you can show hide enable disable every keyboard has a set of layouts associated with it you might have a landscape layout a portrait layout a numeric key layout uh, for example in the device there i was showing those three or four different layouts that i was swiping between and you can obviously reset the thing as well you can set a layout get a layout uh, i will demonstrate this in uh, very momentarily but let me just show you what the code looks like when you're trying to set a particular layout it's it's quite a simple call uh, if you're familiar with how the data wedge api works it's it's similar in that it's an intent based interface where you're passing strings uh, it just enables us to update the um, update the application without introducing breaking changes or without, without you having to manage your dependencies and jar files and xamarin files goodness knows what else so anything that supports intents any application development environment that supports intents will support the enterprise keyboard uh, api so you give it an action and a package just to make sure i'm sending it to the uh to the ekb and this particular api is going to set the keyboard layout and each layout is def is contained within a group so i have a, a group and a layout name these are incidentally what i have defined in the enterprise keyboard designer um so more on that at the end of this presentation and then one thing that's different in the EKB API compared to Data Wedge is we're now using pending intents to get the response back from the EKB. It just means that it gives more flexibility to our developers, so they're able to get uh, to, to get feedback from EKB without having to uh, have that feedback broadcast to other applications on the device um, perhaps or it also gives the flexibility you can receive it in a service you can receive it in an activity whereas for data wedge you're only able to receive it in a in a broadcast receiver um, so yeah this particular api is just setting setting a layout and it's getting some some response in a uh, get activity so that will receive that in my activities on new intent override uh, very similar to if you're registering a pending intent for a notification on android or something like that and uh, rather than give the code for every api i do have a demo application which i put together i previously wrote a blog about this um, but it's probably easier to uh, to just show this i did like record a video but yeah, again like it's, it's a lot easier to to show the if I okay launch there we go Oof, worried got a bit worried there uh, so the application itself enables you to like there's a text box here so it, that will show the, the default keyboard I could enter some text in here very very R heavy text there and then I could disable the keyboard that's using the disable API and then the keyboard no longer shows uh, I could re-enable the keyboard and then the keyboard will show uh, if I want to only show or hide the keyboard on demand, I have this show API, so I don't need to be in a text field for the show API to work. Oh, okay, well, uh, here we go, hide, that works. I could change the layout of this keyboard. So I've previously defined three layouts in the designer tool. And when I call set layout, this is calling set layout one, you see that this is, I mean, please forgive my abilities to design a keyboard here, um, but these keys work. Uh, so if, if this is the kind of layout you were looking for, um, it's got a semi-transparent background. I, I didn't put an awful lot of effort into trying to, to design this. I could delete uh, some keys, but I could also switch to a different layout. This is layout two, this is using a grid layout, or I could switch to layout three, just to show that you could have different color buttons as well. And again, all of these do work. Um, so that's if you want to have manual control over which 
uh, over which keyboard uh, is shown, um, like specifically I'm sending an intent, that, that API, the intent API, and it's showing a particular keyboard. Notice I'm also calling the get available layouts, um, and that's just telling me that there are three, well, there's actually five layouts available, spoiler warning, uh, within the, uh, the, the default group up here, which I've defined. Now, if you want the keyboard to change, the keyboard layout to change based on which activity you have in the foreground, then we also have integration with Data Wedge. So similar to how you're able to define a data wedge profile with scanner settings and well, most people just define scanner settings uh, for a particular activity and then that's that's your, you know, your scanning taken care of. We also enable you to use data wedge to specify a particular keyboard layout for your specified activity and that's probably easier demonstrated than um, me trying to describe it. So if I if I just show you what this looks like, uh, I have this is Data Wedge running on this device, and I have an EKB exercise profile. And what this is uh, this is actually this is associated with the second activity of the application which I was I just shown you. So I, that was the main activity what I was showing, whereas the second activity is associated with this Data Wedge profile. And under uh, configure enterprise browser keyboard settings here, enterprise keyboard settings, sorry. There's a, I can enable or disable, I've, I've enabled a particular layout. And what I've done is I've chosen layout DW001. And uh, so by ticking it, I've enabled that. So what that does is if I invoke the second activity from this app, and I do that by clicking on this button down below, which is not, in, in, incredibly intuitive, I'll grant you. But if I click on that button, that now launches the second activity. So you would expect layout DW001 to be in effect. And indeed, if I give uh, focus to this text box, you'll see that uh, obviously you don't have to have the name of the layout arranged in keys on your keyboard. But uh, again, this all works um, as well. And I can delete keys as well. The one thing uh, that's worth mentioning here is that there's a few prerequisites. You do need to have Enterprise Keyboard 3.2 for Data Wedge functionality to work, as well as Data Wedge version 7.4.44 or higher. And also you need to have a encrypted file in this uh, Enterprise partition up here. And that's encrypt that encrypted file is what is output by the designer tool. Um, giving a lot of, uh, I'm, bu I'm building that designer tool up. Let's hope it lives up to expectations. Um, you can modify that data wedge profile using the data wedge API set config. So all this button down here does is if I click layout DW002, that will invoke the data wedge API set config, and that will modify the layout to be DW002. So that's this this profile has been modified by a data wedge API. And then when I go back and come back in, oh, it actually it did it, it worked. Um, but if I go out and back in again, you'll see that now when I give focus to the text field, the uh, the second data wedge keyboard is uh, is enabled. So very powerful. Uh, the ability to switch between layouts uh, on a whim. We tried to give as much the flexibility to developers as possible. And I've, I've tried to showcase a lot of that in this in this demo app. And uh, hopefully that gives a, a rough idea of how the whole enterprise keyboard fits together. So I'm going to move on to, and that's a demo showing that. This is just uh, screenshots of what the data wedge um, looks like. And I sort of demonstrated that just now as a enterprise keyboard. Oh, OK. It looks like I gave the demo too soon. I do. I do apologize for that. Uh, so I did want to stress that uh, Enterprise Keyboard is a licensed feature for, and let me get the names of these right, uh, for the professional, um, yeah, okay, for, 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 for the professional devices. So um, the majority of our portfolio, let me just try and read the slide, it's probably easier, uh, are, are what we call enterprise devices. And on these enterprise devices, EKB is free to use. Uh, now, the, the lower tier of the devices, the TC 20s, 21s, 25s, 26, those devices will 
require a license in order to use EKB on them. And there is a, a whole process that you can follow in order to license your, your device. I won't get into details here because um, I, I probably wouldn't do it justice, uh, but yeah, it's all, all available in the documentation, but just bear that in mind that here, here's the actual words I was looking for. Those professional service, professional series devices will require a license and most of the devices, this will just work out of the box free to use. So that was licensing. You can switch between keyboards on, on the device. And what I previously showed was, uh, I, yeah, I did, I did show this, didn't I? So you could, if you wanted to, use the, uh, the input method and then you could switch between Gboard and Enterprise Keyboard up here. Now, you could alternatively, I'm not sure I've got this application installed on my, uh, on my device here, two seconds. Um, no, that's embarrassing. Is it that one? No, it's not. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so it is possible to switch between keyboards on the fly. Uh, you do have to have the keyboard installed in your device however you can either you, you could invoke this from an application which is what this sample app is doing here and the details are available in the resource slide at the end of this document or uh, you could pre uh, what provision you could provision the device to have the appropriate keyboard uh, installed as part of your overall provisioning process so you would install enterprise keyboard the apk file um, well, download it to the device, install it, and then you could set the default IME method. And this slide is just to show that there are three different options. Like most of our customers are just going to be using Enterprise Keyboard or the Gboard. However, like worldwide, I know in China, they would have the AOSP version of the keyboard on their applications. Um, if I go to the next slide, this is just showing, uh, oh, it's called Keyboard Switcher. Uh, this is just showing how you would do this from an app. So we have a API is which is actually part of the EMDK and it's called the Profile Manager API and you can apply a profile and it uses the UI manager. Hopefully the text is big enough here and you specify a package name and a class name. The package name is all of this stuff and then enterprise keyboard. The class name is essentially the same as the, the AOSP keyboard. It sort of shows its lineage here. Uh, all available on GitHub. I've released this under MIT. Um, the IT security guys want to have a word with me because I keep releasing everything under MIT. So I'm a little bit worried what they're gonna say, but for now uh, that is all, uh, all released free of charge on, under MIT, but it, it doesn't come with any kind of official support. I should mention that. And uh, I, all this video here is showing how you would switch between keyboards. So that's switching to the enterprise keyboard, that's switching to the Gboard. Maybe this is just showing it working. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't have all three on the same device. That doesn't really make sense. I don't even think you could install them on the same device, but uh, yeah, you'd, you'd have at least two. Uh, the package names and class names are here. The class name always seems to be this uh, input method, Latin, Latin, IME but the actual package name will change. It's either going to be, well, one of these three. And I did go into a lot more detail in this blog, probably about a year and a half ago now I wrote this. Um, it's been a little while. So uh, that's, that's probably a very quick run through the EKB API features. I didn't want to just to dwell on it because it's not the most um, complex of features, uh, to be honest, but I just wanted to show that what we have and that it is possible to control the keyboard. Um, but the main focus, the main demo of this presentation is going to be the enterprise keyboard designer. Uh, so the idea behind this is that you can design your own custom layouts and then you, you save them. You actually get an, a dot encrypted file uh, output to your hard drive, and then you can deploy that encrypted file to your devices. And as long as they're running a high enough version of enterprise keyboards, I think it was like 3.2 or higher, uh, then they can read that encrypted file and they can show your layouts that you've previously created. So everything that I was showing in that slide, in the demo of, of enterprise 
keyboard where I had those three different layouts and I was switching between the two with the API. Those were ones which I designed in this tool. Um, our team have actually gone through a lot of a lot of effort to create separate layouts that look a lot better than mine and those are available to download for different screen sizes and different use cases like some have function keys uh, some are designed for very large vehicle computers some are designed for like really small uh, like badge uh, what's it called the e ec30 uh, the, the kind of badge size system um, I think yes these so these sort of layouts are available like with arrows and, and all sorts of other you could have uh, you long press and it gives you different options of, of what will be uh, what will be shown. So and those sample layouts are available on on the samples there. But without further ado, uh, I've been putting this off because um, it's a live demo, isn't it? So uh, these things never tend to never tend to work flawlessly. But let's see. Let's see what goes wrong. Uh, so we're going to try designing a keyboard and I'm going to show it on my my trusty TC52 down here. So the first thing I do is I create a new keyboard project and I need to call this a very specific name, test001. And the reason I need to call it that name is because my test application, that EKB exercise app that I showed earlier on, uh, it needs to specify the group name, the group. Uh, and the group name is, is this test001 here. So I'm gonna create that. I'm running this on a TC52. I'm going to confirm and then it asks me what I want to do. So the first thing I want to do is to hit this plus sign and I'm going to create a portrait layout and I'm going to call this layout imaginatively layout 001. I was, I was, uh, when I was putting all this together, I was obviously really uh, keen. I was going to create hundreds of layouts, wasn't I, with these, uh, with these numbers here. So here we are. I've created a layout. Uh, in, the, in the Enterprise Keyboard Designer tool. So the first thing I need to decide is whether I'm going to create a grid layout, which so by default, it's selected to have a grid here, um, but I, I'm just reading my notes on the other screen. And uh, I've actually said, I recommend I make this a manual layout, but uh, I could I could like have five columns here, for example, you see the columns change down here. I could have four rows. Obviously these, these buttons get smaller, the more, more columns I do. I could make the height bigger. What's that going to do? I could I could move it up maybe. There you go. So I've moved it up, and then if I move it up, I probably want to increase the height of it. So infinitely configurable. Uh, you don't. Oh oh, can you drag it? You can. See, even I, the person demonstrating this, I'm learning more about this uh, this tool every day. So you can drag it around. That's a grid layout. Um, the, the other option is to create a manual layout. And when you create a manual layout, you don't need to have the keyboard fill in the, the full screen layout. You could just have it half the screen here. I am going to give myself a little bit more space though and, uh, and drag it over there. So I've decided on the size of my manual layout. I could choose a background color. Uh, if, you like, if you like purple, then you could make it background color purple and transparent. So I did have in my in my example, I had like a semi-transparent in layout one, didn't I? Um, so I'll just keep the transparency fairly low. Uh, I would recommend avoiding these device screen properties. I found those to be uh, under work uh, when I was using them. So ignore those for now, we've, we've hidden them away. No one's, gonna, no one's gonna mention them again. Uh, so the next thing to do is to drag keys over to our keyboard. So in the manual layout mode, you need to drag keys over. In the grid layout, the keys are already there for you and you, you need to double click on them and, and give them properties. So I'm just gonna drag over a couple of keys. Let's drag over A, B, C, um, D, no, I'll drag over E. I don't wanna don't want be predictable here. So uh, this is a very, very, you know, I, I could then modify the actual position of these keys. Obviously, these aren't in a straight line. And if I was doing this for real, I would uh, take a lot more time over this. I'm double clicking to modify a particular key. If I single click, then that's what the key looks like when it's depressed on the device. So notice how each of these keys has a button color associated with it, and it has a pressed color and a a non-pressed color. Uh, so now when I press down, it becomes yellow. Um, so let's uh, actually, let's just save that. I'm gonna save the layout, save the project, why not? 
And what that's done, oh, well, let me just show you that. That wrote a test 001 dot encrypted file to, well, my, my downloads folder randomly. Um, so what you would, what you used to then have to do was to copy this test 001 dot encrypted to the um, to a particular place on the device to so enterprise device settings ekb config and then the name uh, i had previously done that for my test app before this presentation but with this deploy button down here that does that work for you so as long as you have a device connected through usb uh, it will automatically push the file for you and now because all of my layouts were called the same as my test app was expecting. I now have a layout 001, which when I call set layout is, uh, is here on the device. And now I have the F, E, C, B, A keys um, appearing in the text field, as you might expect. So that is what I would refer to as like basic functionality, but it just shows you how you could drag some keys over and actually show that working on a device very, very quickly. Uh, I'm going to try now to demonstrate some of the more complicated or uh, detailed features of the app. I guess I don't want to call them complicated because uh, we're all about intuition and, and easy to use. Uh, so you could have capital uh, capital text on your buttons. You could have small text. Uh, you probably don't need to see me drag all of those. You could have numbers or you could have some, uh, some special characters. Uh, what a lot of our a lot of our uh, customers find handy is to have these function keys. So if you're running, for example, and they seem to have chosen a, a SAP uh, app, is this like ITS or this is the thing that came after ITS? I'm, okay, they've chosen something SAP in the background and it, you can drag function keys on. And then for example, oh, I've chosen a function key. If I press F2 and if I was running this app in the background, then that would do the, the clear action. So notice, on the right hand side, all of these buttons have properties. And for example, A here, the press action, when I press that button, is a key in caps, and it was number 29, the value was 29. Uh, what that actually refers to is the Android, and I'm, again, I'm looking at my notes, I apologize, is the Android key event key code. And let me just, uh, let me just show that, uh, just so that, you know what I'm talking about and uh, it, it makes sense here. So the Android key event, uh, duh, 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 and then I will load this up for, I think it's key code underscore A and uh, capital keys and small keys have the same key code. So that's why there's that differentiation between key and key in caps, uh, key code A, here we are. It exists. So number 29. So it looks like we're specifying these numbers in decimal. And for the function keys, for example, this is key 131. And I believe there is a key code for F1, which in theory should be 131. So that's where these numbers come from that we're uh, inserting into here. And like I say, if you're creating this from a grid layout, then you can't drag these keys. You need to modify these properties manually. So it's obviously very important to realize um, which number to put in when you're choosing choosing a key or, or not a key. Oh, that is the question. Uh, there is the capability to choose an image uh, when it's both pressed and not pressed. And uh, I know a lot of the recommendations is to use the Google material icons, but I don't see as much like knowledge out there that we do actually create our own enterprise icons. So I'm going to take a very brief segue to just show you the, the Zebra icons page. So ignore the URL having Firebase in it. These are actually icons from our user experience team, our design team, which they've created and they've made available to anyone to use in their enterprise focus application. So although material icons are really good um, from, from Google and the, you know, you, you, usable by anyone, they might not necessarily have uh, the hold still or printing icons or barcode. We've got, uh, or if I just scroll down here, we've got all sorts of um, identity information. 
obviously the Android logo. We've got things like our mobility DNA products, Cloud Connect, uh, Enterprise, so Cards, SAM, Augmented Reality. To, these, are, these icons are available for you to make use of in SVG or Ping, just please be aware of that. And uh, let me just show you what that looks like. So I can choose uh, to have, maybe this is the an alert icon. When I click this, maybe this icon is a barcode. Um, that's probably a good, uh, good segue into, rather than key in caps, let's say when I click that barcode icon, I actually want to perform a scan. So I'm going to choose scan trigger when I, when I have a press action on here. Then if I save the layout and deploy, Yes, okay, that's all done. Then in theory, uh, how do I get this to reload? There we go, that was easy. Um, hopefully if I try the same trick where I, there we go, so it's scanning on my face. So you can see that that is, is performed a scan. I'm a little bit wary that everything has worked well so far. Obviously you see the the icon there um, that, that I've previously uh, previously downloaded. So it's not just scan or keys that you can have associated with these buttons. Let's just associate something else with button E here. So you can actually have any uh, Unicode character. I think ah, UC stands for Unicode. And I'd previously looked this up. So the Russian, I've got the Russian D here. Um, don't ask me to actually pronounce these in Russian. Uh, thank you. And for this one, I have the Russian. Uh, I really don't know what this character is. It's the one that sort of sounds like. Um, that's my my yeah. Okay, I, I apologize. I I am not bilingual by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I I know some of the Cyrillic alphabet. But then um, you see this running on a device again. If I uh, if I go over here and uh, set the layout, and then I had my Russian D and Russian. Uh, I'm sure that has an actual uh, an actual um, letter name, and I apologize for that. Uh, so that was Unicode. Obviously, we support any Unicode characters. Those were just ones that I'd previously like looked up and made sure that they were working before I start demonstrating stuff. Um, what I want to show next is canned text. So the canned text feature enables you to choose. A, a couple of particular messages that you might want to happen when you press on that key. So like with a standard keyboard, you're typing in, it gives you some, some suggestions in that field above the keyboard. Well, in that field above the keyboard, maybe you want to, uh, to have some specific text. So like message, um, message one, um, call me, go away if you want to be passive aggressive. So uh, yeah, that's uh, attached to button C and very simple to quickly save, deploy. I'm not even sure you need to save to be honest, but I always do just to be on the safe side, hit button one. And then when I hit, was it C? Here we are. So rather than insert C into the text field here, I have these three options. I can just, if I choose go away, obviously, please don't go away, please continue watching the uh, the webinar, then the, the text appears in the, in the text field. And you could obviously put as, as much as you wanted in there. The other thing which is worth demonstrating is the macro feature. Now macros enable you to, um, to build, well, I don't know, everyone here knows what a macro is, you know, ever since they've been around since like Excel, version three or something. So you could choose an action. You Maybe we're going to add an A. Uh, so that, what was that? Key 29, a lowercase A. And then we're going to have a, um, a delay. Maybe you're, you're having a tab, you're going between fields. I, I don't know. You could build these macros up however you want. A delay of one second. And then we're going to input a Unicode character. Let's stick with my Oh, maybe it's no. What was it? It was 414. Stick with my my D. And then what else have we got under we could delay, key in caps? Uh, we could switch keyboards. I'll show you switching keyboards um, next, actually. So yeah, they're, they're the macros. Save, save, deploy. OK. And then if I go back, if I reload, then notice how, let's delete some of this so it's easier to see what's going on. Okay, and now 
you see it puts an A in there, it waits a second and it inputs a, a D. Well, so that was the macro. Obviously, you can make that as complicated as you want. That was a very simple macro, um, but just had a, a pause and a couple of characters. I've only shown a single layout in this in this demo so far, but I just want to show what it looks like if you create a second layout. So that was layout one. Let me create a different one. I'm going to call it layout two again because that's the names that my enterprise keyboard API exerciser was using. Uh, I'm going to use a grid layout here just because and uh, notice how so I have suggested to the team that rather than just A's, maybe we populate this with A, B, C, D. But I, I, yeah, I am but the uh, the voice of the voice of the developers. Hopefully they take my uh, my opinion on board. But uh, what you what you then do is you modify. Just make sure that just because you're modifying this A here and making that a B, obviously that changes the the text here. But you then also need to give it a a key down value. So obviously B would be key in caps, key value thirty. Just go through here. I won't make you sit and watch me do all of these. But uh, what I really wanted to show, let's say when I do click A, um, let's, let's actually change that into an arrow, for example. So maybe what I actually want to happen is to go back to my other layout when I click on that arrow. And I can do that with the switch, uh, with the custom layout uh, action here. And I'm going to go to layout 001. I'm going to hit OK and save and deploy and then what that ends up looking like on oh what happened oh okay good Whew, so i deleted everything then uh what that ends up looking like is so i now have two layouts so notice how the the the, the exerciser app is now enumerating both layouts uh, but i'm only showing layout one still because i'd clicked on this one if i click on layout two again because of the way the app is written it's invoking layout 002 but now this button will automatically switch to uh, the, the previous layout one. Here we go. Um, and obviously there's no corresponding button on this layout, so I need to go back here to layout two. B is obviously working again, capital B, because that's how I configured that to work. The only other option that I haven't covered is the switch, these here, these like switch ABC, switch one, two, three. These are in theory, to switch back to the default layout. In fact, I'm just looking at my notes again. Uh, so these will switch. So if I wanted to switch to ABC when I hit the big A button here, I could do that, that would work. But there is no way to like switch back to your custom layouts. Um, that sounds very, very final, but oh, which button did I put it on? It was on the, it was this one here, wasn't it? Um, this will load up the, the ABC or QWERTY as, uh, as, as I call it. Uh, but then how do I get back to my custom layout? Well, obviously in this app, I could use the API to get back, but if I didn't have access to that API uh, in my app, there'd be no way to, to get back to my custom layout um, without, uh, yeah. So I just use that feature with the knowledge that you need to like, have some way of getting back to the custom keyboard. Uh, the oh, what have I not demonstrated? I think that is everything that I was going to show. I mean, I what I didn't do was uh, was like make you sit here and have me demonstrate what happens if you uh, like change the text. Or, oh, okay. Well, what what does happen if you change the text color to be green? Uh, um, oh, okay. Maybe. Uh, well, I can change the font size. That will work. There we go. So that's made that, that font a little bit bigger. This is annoying. Ah, there we go. I can't use a color picker. That's the problem. It's not the software. It's the it's the user. Um, so I've made that green, and now it is um, a big A. Secondary text is what appears above the uh, the character when you click on it. So you, I, I think I think that's what secondary text is. Uh, secondary. Um, I don't seem to have written that in my notes. Uh, okay, but I could have. Oh, this is what I haven't covered actually. Uh, so let's just leave that as. Oh, oh no, sorry, it appears in the top right-hand corner. Uh, for okay, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me go to something which I I can talk authoritatively about. But let's say we want to have a repeating character. If I press and hold this button, so let's let's give this like U for example. But if I press and hold it, I want it to continually press the um, the key U. 
uh, which is um, I, I let me let me just look up what key U is. Key code underscore U is uh, 49. 49. So uh, that would be long press, but there's another option under long press. There's repeat key, and with repeat key, with 49, when I press and hold it down, then it will repeat the key in the input field. So that option is not available in the standard press action. It's only available in the long press action. And uh, I'll just show what that looks like here. So pressing, nothing comes out. But if I press and hold, we get an awful lot of views. Uh, the this this button secondary is is just this little icon up here. It would seem um, more information available in the uh, in the documentation. Style uh, again button color images I think I've covered all of this you can you can change the transparency I'll get away from that uh, you can change the transparency of these uh, the actual buttons which will reveal the background color more so this is less obvious because um, my background is very similar to the button color but there we go I've made it purple um, so you can make the background transparent you could make the key transparent but obviously if you make them both transparent then you're able to see all the way through to the uh, to the application underneath, which can be very useful. And I know uh, in the in the default uh, like these, I think these are all semi-transparent with with yellow, so you could see behind. So if you're on a very small screen, for example, then that's something that you would want to be able to do. So hopefully that's given you a really good uh, outline and overview of how the enterprise keyboard designer works. I'm coming up to uh, to the 15 minute mark where I, I need to go to Q&A, but that was all I had to cover in this presentation. And just the rest of the slides here are telling you where to download it from and, and stuff I've already covered, like um, pushing the the name, pushing that encrypted file. You can either do it through ADB, you can do it through um, EMM, however you're, whatever can write to this enterprise partition, or you can click the, this is an old screenshot, or you can click the deploy button, which is down there in the newer version of Enterprise Keyboard Designer. So with that, I will uh, I'll go and uh, Stacey, are there any uh, questions, please? Yes, you have you have quite a few. You can hear me, correct? Yes, I can. Back. Yes, thank you. Okay, that's it. So let's hope if I can get through all these. Um, okay, Pierre Lawrence says hello, and here we have, we have encountered uh, with the key value, no way to find the, Ask A for you, it's key 29. Um, mm -hmm. And then the rest of the content is a little bit about this. I can't read it. So I apologize, Pierre. Um, do, do you want to send me the question and, and I'll answer it over yeah, email, Stacey, if that's I the... I will do that because it's a little odd um, to see. So let me do that, Darren. Bear with us a minute here, people. We're going to get that to you. Um, let me move on to the next as long as we're going here. Some thank yous, which is lovely. Thank you all. Um, is it able to activate enterprise keyboard via stage now? Activate, activate? activate as in um, like set it as the default input method. Uh, yes, it is possible. OK. You use the UI manager and I, I did show the profile on one of my slides. Maybe the question came before I before I did it that. It did, probably. Yeah. I apologize. I just want to make sure I cover it. Um, are you able to use on Xamarin Android um, in a parenthesis? He has Enterprise Keyboard API. Yes, you can. So any application which can send intents that can handle the, the pending intents. And uh, obviously, Java, Kotlin, or Xamarin will all handle pending intents. So yes, you can. I don't have a sample out there in Xamarin, but it's fairly self-explanatory looking at the Java, to be honest. It's, it's, it's just the, the text that you put in those uh, in those calls. Okay, and then Amy asks, um, can we display the layout based on the screen rotation, for example, portrait mode layout one and landscape mode layout two? That's not automatic. You would need to have some logic to set the layout with the API when you detect that rotation. Okay. Uh, Matthew is asking, can we design EKB to be docked and float? The reason is, is that if I have an input field on the bottom half of the display, um, the enterprise keyboard uh, would overlay it on, even if it's transparent, floating it would allow it to move up and down and allow key entry. That's why he's asking. 
no i i'd never thought of that that's not possible um i'm pretty sure i know oh, let me let me just get my device over here so like with gboard for example it's possible to and i always forget how to do this um to like drag it out uh okay maybe i oh floating that's it so yeah you, you have this like non-docked um but no we don't offer any anything like that i'm afraid um yeah that that was me trying to do it off um yeah, so sorry, the, the answer is no, it is a, an interesting feature. So uh, Stacey, if, if like, obviously you give me a copy of these questions, so I will raise that yep. with the team as a potential feature enhancement. Okay, and then um, where do you find the key values? So they are, um, so if you just search for like Android developer, you're looking for the key event documentation and I could make this a little bit bigger. This is uh, this is where I find it. I'm sure they're all over the the web, but it, it's the actual value that you give. Are the oh goodness, it's got very big now. Uh, if you just search for key code in here, and then underscore, and then the letter that you want, like A, for example, is what I was searching for before. Uh, oh goodness, that gives me all like sh alt shift and goodness knows what um, key code button. There you go, key code B, and they're, they're all constants to find in Android. They've been in there since API level one. Then you're looking for this decimal number here, constant value 30. And that's what the designer tool is using. Okay, let's try and get to the next one here. Do, 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 do. Amy. Okay, Amy asked again, uh, by the way, are the format of icons supported other than um, PNG? No, I don't think so. I think it's just okay. the, the PNG file. Oh, oh, it's off. It's just offering me raster. Oh no, is SVG? G? I've never tried it, yeah. and so I'd need to look at the documentation. I, I, I'm obviously looking at this box here, and I don't know whether they've just like used the default image filter for when because obviously when you design these boxes you can say what file filters you want um yeah so i, I don't know the answer sorry i think it's just um raster png okay does the enterprise keyboard tool provide an auto alignment of the keys so it can nicely align that you know be a nicely aligned and neat no uh i that would that's uh something which i've raised with the team and i agree with you that that would be a good feature request to be in the product Okay, Phil said, not a question. The second Russian character is Z-H-E, Z -H -E, pronounced like S in the vision, which I'm obviously oh, not Ah, thank you, Divi yes. I'm okay. obviously I not doing that correctly. <laughs> you're, you're as good as me, Stacey, at this announcement. Yes. I should have chosen a different it's character that I could pronounce. <laughs> right. Um, can the enterprise keyboard application on a device display a specific keyboard? when the device screen is in landscape orientation and automatically switch to when the device is in portrait, I, similar to the last question, I think. Yeah, no, you, you can't do that. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's a reason, like because some of our devices are landscape by default and some aren't. So you, you do have to choose. It's, it's not like, oh, I, I won't try and do it, but um, it's not like if you choose a, uh, portrait layout, then that will display automatically. Or if you choose a landscape layout, that will display when you rotate. You you need to do all of that stuff manually. But again, um, I'll raise I'll raise that with the team as one of the outcomes of this uh, dev talk. Is there a way with the standard layout to default to caps lock um, for all characters, not just on the first? Uh, no, I don't remember off the top of my okay. head. Um, that that would be for the best thing to do is to search here auto capitalization. Mm, you can turn that on or off. I think the answer is no, based on a quick search of the MX documentation here. It's just that auto capitalization is normally the first yeah first character in first word in a sentence. All right. Well, here's a good question: Is enterprise uh, Zebra Enterprise Keyboard and Enterprise Keyboard Designer is it free for use on Zebra devices? Yes, most devices. Uh, let me, whilst whilst uh, you asked asked the question, let me go back to my slide on licensing and actually click that link so that it gives a little bit more information on uh, licensing in general. So um, we have a. Oh, I thought there was like a, a matrix of licensing uh sorry bear with please bear with uh, 
Zebra licensing up here will give you this information. So th something like enterprise keyboard on professional devices needs a uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh goodness a MDNA enterprise license, but it's free on enterprise devices. But you need to buy a license on professional devices, and professional devices are as shown in this table here. So anything other than the four devices in this table, it is free. So hopefully that's explained it a little bit better yeah. than I did earlier on. Well, I think that's helpful. And I think there's, if there's any inquiries regarding like if there's pricing or licensing or if it's free or anything like that, if we can't address it here, which we may not be able to, I would encourage people to email us at developer at zebra.com. And that way we monitor that um, mailbox and Darren and I can make sure it goes to the right person if, if either he or himself or myself cannot answer the, the question. So I encourage that. So if there's other questions that come up today, you, you can feel free to email us there. We'll, we'll respond to you personally. So um, Alberto asks, is there an auto alignment when you create a manual keyboard? Manual keyboard, no. Manual layout. Uh, manual layout. Yeah. Yeah, no, you need to you need to do the alignment yourself, I'm afraid. I know it is quite laborious, and uh, when I was doing my example keyboards, I found that quite tedious, but yeah, what you've only got to do it once, and then it's it's done. But unfortunately, there is no auto-align feature. Um, again, oh, be good on the okay. team's backlog. And then Matthew asked our last question of the day, does Enterprise Browser work with um, Enterprise Keyboard uh, API to switch keyboard layout or keyboard on and off. Yes, it should do. The only thing enterprise, so enterprise browsers intent API does not handle pending intents. And so you wouldn't be able to, to get any information from the enterprise keyboard. Um, like you can't find the available layouts, but you should be able to set layouts because I believe it's optional to specify that pending intent. So you could just like fire and forget the intent and you'd have to assume that the intent was was received. But yeah, that's the only limitation of using enterprise browser. The I'm talking about the eb.intent API. Okay. Um, and just a quick note before we close up uh, our presentation today, uh, this is being recorded. We always post this, uh, we're gonna be posting this to our events page on our developer portal. And then we also have a YouTube playlist where we have a history of all of the dev um, talks and you can go on there anytime and listen to them at your leisure. Um, so that gets posted within a week to 10 days, depending upon how quickly we can get that up there. But, um, and as always, and I've typed this to everybody in the, the chat here today, please feel free to send us questions either through the portal in the forums or, you know, a quick way to do it is email us at developer at zebra.com and we can respond to you as quickly as possible. So with that, I want to thank Darren. This was really a, a great dev talk today. Very informative. We had a lot of great questions and thanks to our audience for attending. Um, and we will see you next month where we were talking about our visibility IQ APIs. So with that, I'm going to close it out. And thanks, Darren. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Stacey. Ciao, everyone. Bye.